Yeah, just let us just what it is, what it do, people. How you doing? Welcome back to Link Up with your boy Lux and yours truly, Craze. But today, it's a special day. It's a special day. We have a special guest. And when I say special, I mean hella special. A huge supporter of the Gundam community, huge supporter of the Gun Evil community, an all around all star player and owner of the number one ranked team for the Gundam Evolution New Type League. Wow, that's a mouthful. My guy, your favorite, main guy to hate, but you got to love him and respect him, my boy Legacy. Legacy, how you doing, man? How you doing I'm, today? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, you know. Um, woke up just for this, and uh, just can't wait to get into it, you know, with, with whatever you've got planned for today. Hey. You know what? We we, we got we got some stuff here. We we got a lot of questions for you, man. But before I get into the questions, I'm gonna go ahead and get my boy Lux in here. Lux, tell him how you doing today, man. How you, how's your day going? Man, I've been going good. I'm not gonna lie. Just like Legacy, I woke up like a few minutes before this, man. I was slumped out. I've been working all day on a bunch of stuff for Celestial Assault, you know? Got a lot in store. This man was sleeping. I'm running on good old Nas over here. Good old death. <laughs> but overall, man, yeah, you know, I had it, today's a good day, man. It's been productive. If I'm tired, that means we did something today, right? That means it was a productive yeah. day. Um, but yeah, guys, check it out. Today, this is episode two. As you guys already seen, this titled as the rise of a super team. And if you guys have been following the GNL, the breakout series specifically, you guys should know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of teams out there, very talented individuals, but there's one team in particular that seems to be the Bane of a lot of those other teams. People see them, they start chatting in there, go up, yell, listen, we're not going to go for it. We might as well just go for second place. It's incredible. I actually heard that. Somebody say that. They see the team like, nah, you know what? Let's just take second place. Legacy. Like that? What the fuck have you done to the community, <laughs> my man? You you put the fee in the wrap of God in them. I, I don't know, man. Just, just scrim. Just scrim? <laughs> even them, yeah, even, scrim. Even, even no, them. no, no. It can't, can't be just that, bro. It can't be just that because I know I know you. So far, see how I, you do it. You don't really go for full sin on scrims. You don't do that. I like, I, like it's definitely not just scrims because we can barely get scrims. But like, I don't know. We just sit there and like put the time in. Even if we don't got scrims, we're doing other stuff. You know, there's right. there's more to it. Man, look, so you're you're the competitive guy. I'm just a fan. I'm just a viewer. Like, mm -hmm. if you come across a team, like Team Sucky Vacuums. And this, and you know what? When it, well, I want to ask this question before we get into the whole introduction about who Le Legacy is and his background in the esports scene, all that. But I want to know, Lux, as a competitor, you see a team like this, and within your scene, does that make you falter and back up a little bit more and say, you know what, and just be content with a certain placement, or do you really take that as a challenge and rise, and you know, rise to it? So, like for me as competitor, like playing football competitive video gaming growing up um it was more like we would go in we wouldn't not we wouldn't expect to lose we would, we would give it always give it our all but like like you know it was like somewhere deep down you knew that team probably had that it factor and it's that it factor that really like just strikes that fear in you you know like especially going against like a really good team like a super team granted i've always been on a super team when i was playing sports um humble bro right, it, <laughs> But yeah, like going, go, yeah, but going against like school rivals that are also like really good, like it was really a trip. Like you, you knew deep in your heart, like it could go any way at any moment. So we will always play for the win, but like somewhere deep down, you knew it could, it could easily, just as easily swing the other way. Dude, it's and with that sound, it's new type time, people. You guys already know what we're gonna do over here. We're gonna go ahead and you know deep dive into the into the brain of this. Of this, oh my God! This, this, this fear, this like, this, like this terror on the gun evil scene. Legacy, I'm yeah. gonna ask you straightforward. We, we you know we talk, we know we talk behind the scenes. You know, I like to be very, um, very communicative with a lot of people within the scene. It's you know not just about business when it comes to the league and everything. I want to get to know everybody here as a, as a person, as a player, as a human being because sometimes people only see the competitive side. They only see you as this person within the scene, but and honestly, that's only a persona. After, outside of this whole thing, there's a different person behind it. Now, if, you, if the person is a, a D-bag and just acts like this all the time, you know, I can't defend them. 
But overall, I kind of want to know, at least from my personal my personal take, who are you? Where do you come from? Like, you know, what like in the esports scene, like who is legacy within the esports scene and, you know, in your track record? Uh, I mean, you know, just been around. I'm sure I'm sure most people know at this point, but just been around Paladins for a long time. Uh, competed in that for four years, maybe five, depends how you look at it. Some people would discount the last year because the game was kind of dead, but yeah, like four to five years. So I got a decent amount of experience in hero shooters. Um, and then sort of just been chilling since then, really, since about 2020. Been like looking for other games to play. Dabbled in some Valorant, but the game's just bad. Um, so yeah, just sort of since Gundam came up, I've just been putting time into that. We're uh, just seeing how it goes, you know? And that's, in, that, and that's in, you know, and I like the fact that you mentioned the different types of games. Like, you're coming from Paladins, and you're, you know, you're going through, you know, you're testing, you're, te- you're testing the waters. A lot of games come through. You, you want, you got, people always want to be the first one in the scene. Um, but you mentioned Valorant, right? And that's where I'm kind of saying, you know what? People say, oh, that, that the game is trash. People can say a lot of it. Oh, no, that's bullshit. Ah, they can come up with, you know, their own, their own stuff. But I always feel like there's, there's players out there who excel in certain scenes, you know, and Fortunately, I, the the point clicky shooty that one little one tap of Valorant doesn't do it for me. I like I like to feel my kills, like I like to feel that I'm, you know I'm 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 filling them you know I'm pumping them full of lead, and in games like that I just can't do it. But don't hey not knocking them they 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 are an amazing game, an amazing title, but again sometimes it just isn't the one for certain people, and I'm one of them. Um, Lux, well you got any questions for for Legacy about the, about the whole um esports scene? Um. So like coming as a competitor, um, I was I just wanted to ask like, especially being a two time champion, like after um pilot showdown, um, I heard that you ended up having to do a whole entire roster shuffle for your team because some people decided to step down. Um, how did that affect your mentality going throughout the breakout series, and how did you overcome that? Um, I think it kind of sucked at the time, you know, because it was like we had we had won this tournament convincingly. We were like no real plans to like split anything up but you know for various reasons people just said that they didn't want to play i think for the second tournament a guy had a flight uh on the exact same day so he would have been out regardless um there was just like a lot of problems and people just didn't want to practice and that sort of thing so you know me and carl we were just like we'll we'll take a step back we'll we'll sit this one out um and we'll just like see what happens afterwards you know I don't really think it was like a stressful time because we were kind of just chilling the whole time and just seeing how things played out. But um, I don't know. It was, it was a little bit annoying, but I, I think the like where we've ended up now is probably better off anyway. Um, just with like the players we've surrounded ourselves with, play the game now, you know. So I think that helps. And just to go off that question, like, what is the energy that like you guys for like for? Pres- what is the energy that you guys kind of allude to each other? Like, what is like the mentality you guys have going to each tournament? Uh, you mean like now or like the difference between the two teams? Um, we, let's go with the difference between two teams and like how that now affects you on your current team as well. Okay. Uh, I, I think going into the first one, you know, the game was like really new. Um, a lot of people, us included, didn't really know what was going on. It was more of just throw it like throw something at the wall and hope it works because what well, the game had been out for like three weeks at that point um and that team was just made up of like really really talented players from other games um who were grinding gundam at the time but like you know it, it's not like they were pl- like fully committed long term it was just ah oh, we're really good at other games let's go play this mm-hmm. um so that was a bit different it was more of just i guess we'll turn up do what we think will work and then everyone kind of did the same because the game was brand new Whereas with this t- this team, I think um, we've like the game's been out longer. People understand better, um, and it's more still a really like talented group of individuals. But it's more we have better ideas now. Um, we have actual strats, like just more. It- it's like before we were just a-, a sum of some of our parts, where it was like ah, uh, we're all just good. But now it's more so like you know we all have ideas. We all we all do things together. Um, the team as a whole just plays well together, and I, I think it's a, a big shift in how we can play the game because of that. All right, all right, yeah. There is one thing I wanted to add on to that. It's 
Like you can have like what we, what we consider a super team. We can consider you, any, you can grab the six best players in all of Gundam, but the one thing is, it's never a guaranteed thing. I think we've seen it so far. The GNL has produced so many teams. Some that thought they were gonna just wreck through everybody without any losses, and those teams are no longer favorites. You know. Fan favorites, fans hated some of these things, but they they just couldn't last. But the, so with that said, I feel that you don't. You, it's not just just picking up everybody's best place from everybody's team. It's having somebody at the helm that can handle those egos, tame them, and say, "No, we're here for we're we're for the same for, for the same reason. Let's get to it." And they respect that person, and and this is where you get the super team. Because super teams can have a lot of people. We can't consider those super teams if they just don't vibe and mess together. And I think I think that's what you got, man. I think you got a good set of squad. You took somebody from me, okay? Think <laughs> from me, but we, you know, we, I, I want to see that because it, it just makes your team like the staple, and everybody has to rise to the occasion. So you inadvertently did everybody a favor. You motivated so many other team owners and captains to get their players in line, bro. Like, you literally made some people actually quit the game, but not because they just, you know, you guys were that, you know, that intimidating. It's because they realized this might, the competency might not be what they want. So you kind of filtered out a lot of people. And yeah, I, I see that as a good thing. It depends who you ask. Like, I, I think. Obviously, you know, regardless, it, it wouldn't matter if it was us or anyone else. You know, some players are going to get filtered out eventually anyway. Uh, you know, some people might not like the game. Some people might just think, ah, oh, this isn't for me. Some people might not like the people that they can team with. So it's like, you know, pe people will have their different reasons for quitting um, and doing things. That I don't think we're the sole reason. Um, but at the same time, like, it's, it's also not good if people quit, you know? Like, I want people to scrim. I need people to play against, like... Like, you know, if in this hypothetical where we're killing all these teams, which I don't think we are, but, you know, if, if we were, uh, eventually, who do we play against, you know? I hate you. And, and I, I don't look at it as, like, you guys are, like, making them quit. It's more of, like, it's just an eye-opener. Like, cause honestly, not everybody is meant for, competitive, for the competitive scene. It's cool. Like, I admitted myself, I have three teams within three games. And... I, I tell my team all the time, like, I would love to play with you guys because I'm better in another game than I am in Gun Evo that I, I could be of some help, but I, I know that I don't have the time to put into that. And I enjoy the casual side. I enjoy, you know, meeting other people, doing, you know, like little scrims between each other. So it, it might just not be for everybody, but and that's not a bad thing to admit. Lux, what do you think about that? Nah, for real. Um, I agree with that, honestly. When it comes to like just teams, it just it might not just be for someone. I've played on teams with people that didn't want to put in the hours or didn't have the time to put in the hours, you know, and they had to step down themselves. So at the end of the day, it's like it's sort of like a business, but it's also like a camaraderie where you meet people and then they sometimes they'll have to leave. But at the end of the day, there's no hard feelings. You're like you're just there you're there to with a goal in mind and that's to win and just dominate the competition. Yeah, well, I, I think too, you, you need people that like blend and because, you know, a lot of people, yourself included, like do credit me for being like the guy, but I could be the guy as much as I want to be if, if my team doesn't doesn't do it properly and doesn't do things, it doesn't matter, you know, so you also got to give them a lot of credit too for like, yeah, you, you know, I, I have strong opinions about the game and I have a lot of ideas, but at the end of the day, like if I didn't have a team of solid people, it wouldn't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. so you you got to give them credit too. And believe you me, man, that 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 squad you got, it's a lot of time to people. Fortunately, I didn't notice that. Um, after the last event, it wasn't even at the last event. It was after a certain incident that happened. Um, where his account glitch is no longer playing the game at the moment. Again, it's all at the moment because this game is. This game, you know, love it's a love-hate relationship right now with the game. You know, we understand the current situation. We know the stuff that wants to get fixed. Uh, we know the things that can better the game. But like you know, and like in other titles as well that you've been, that you've been part of the, and that you've been a participant of that currently people call a dead game or whatever, those games 
didn't might, might have not had the like the the monetary or the backing to be able to continue on. Um, this game has that benefit that it does. It's just either you trust the process, like I always say, or you don't. One of the two. You can you can you can, you can um, accept not accept it. Take what's being given now and keep progressing through until it gets fixed, which eventually it will. The game only has three months. In my opinion, it only has three months. Um, and you can just wait it out and just keep practicing, keep, you know, grinding the game out, go do something else in the meantime, whenever you get like super, like, you know, oversaturated, but I appreciate your attitude, the way you, that you can, you, that you, um, present yourself amongst the community members. You're not out there, you know, trashing the game, talking bad about others. Like, like people might look at you in a competitive way in one way, but I see you in a different light. Like, I don't see that, that ego, that ego that people say might, you might have, but Hey, it's competition, man. If you don't have an ego in competition, I mean, I don't know what you're doing. That means you're not pushing it. But um, with that said, I want to kind of push it on before we, you know, we get we lose we lose track. Um, I appreciate you coming. You, I appreciate you letting us know a little bit more of your background. But I I want to go into what people want to know. I want to go a little deeper. All right, this is I want to deep in, deep dive into the scene a little more. Yeah. Um, the upcoming Gundam Showdown coming out next December 10th. Um, fortunately, um, legacy and, and a lot of other people that are not within the, 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 uh, the United States of America within that region are not going to be able to play. Um, I don't want to jump into that topic unless the chat is going to start spamming. Fuck this. Canada's not real. Like they're like, they've been saying in every single chat. Um, but I have seen that you did take the initiative that says you're not going to participate. You're still supporting it in your own way. You were taking up roles or, uh, you were giving out, you were actually presenting people the opportunity of you coaching them, which yeah. is pretty cool. Like it's, it's either you're, either you're, you're really trying to find out a little bit more about the teams you're competing against and you're being a little slick with it. Or you really are trying to take one of these little Maybe teams that both. might not be no. down there and just, you know, bring them up or to the top. Like, what is why, it, man? Why, why not little, both? A little bit of both? Yeah, why a little. Not both, you know? <laughs> now like, that's... That's tough, man. Like that's tough. A lot of teams out there, they do, they do need coaches. They do need a little guidance. But I know some of the little, a little susceptible. Like, yeah, damn, should we, should we, should we pick at him right now, man? But I think he's gonna take all of our strats and just use it against us. Like, Lux, is that a power move? Is that a boss move or? Shoot, for me, me personally, I don't, I, I don't know, man. Like, when it comes to like coaching other teams, like you, you do see it. But like, especially at the level that you guys are at, that he, Legacy is competing at, like especially being the number one team, I can see it. I can see it being beneficial to other teams. Like, it helps foster their community, helps foster their team's growth and everything. But at the same time, like he's getting access to your strats. Yeah, like <laughs> at the end of the day, like, but at the same time, you can change those strats at any time. I can adjust them. Yeah. So it's not. It's not like it. Like those strats are permanent. It's just here. You're now getting that knowledge from uh, from someone that can help you improve and then you can now like offer that knowledge improve the strats you know it's yeah, like I, me pro I go think ahead it's a mutual thing too like it's not even you know oh leak me your strats and i'll coach you it's like you know it goes both ways i'm sure like you know i, I would help them like get things down too that they like weren't good up before you know like it definitely it definitely could go both ways for sure are you coaching it are you did you uh, accept an offer from one of the teams that I know there's a lot. If I look at the showdown right now, there's got to be at least 38 teams already officially signed up. And then maybe about 20 something that are still incomplete. So there's still time yeah. for these other teams to come up. So any other teams out there that might, that, that hit you up or you want to keep that, you know, on the down low? Uh, I, I was coaching a team, but they disbanded. So like, I'm, I'm free right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> that damn man, that that one thing about the, this banding teams, bro. That's and I and I just hope that it was it was a team that actually had the opportunity to play in the U.S. Because oh, yeah. just yeah. Ugh, that fucking sucks. Bro. Yeah, no, they they could they could have played in the twenty k, and yeah. they probably would have come like top four as well. To be honest, yeah. What is it with teams of disbanding legacy? Like, what is your take on that? Because we were see, throughout the breakouts, we've seen a lot of teams disband and teams that are getting back together like there are teams out there that have points that qualify them for either the academy league or the new type league and like they're just disbanding like what is your thought on that um i mean i said this it was a pretty similar thing in paladins where like it's hard to say like obviously you know people have 
various different reasons for for disbanding. Like it's never just one thing. Um, a lot of the time, I think people are just impatient. Like a lot of people will come in, uh, throw together like six guys with like no competitive background, and they'll just go, "We're gonna do this, and if we don't come top three, we we break it up and we go next." You know, um, and that happens in every game. That's not like just a this game thing. But I think, you know, if if you want to beat the, the like the long-standing teams that are gonna stay together, stick around, actually work on things, like you can't be doing that at least, you know. Like if there's other reasons, like that's fine, you know. But I think that's like the main one that you want to avoid. And and apart from your team, any teams out there that you see with potential out of the ones um, that have been playing in the breakout cities? I you know I I think the ones like that people would consider the top three right now like the Omni team and uh and uh I guess like the Die team uh with like Bitey and stuff like that sort of group of players like Bork I guess mm-hmm. um okay. I guess like people in that sort of area are kind of the people like if they if they play the game and they work at it yeah but right right now besides that I'm not sure I just haven't seen too many teams in general besides like them you know like at least being consistent with it. So we're okay. looking at so we're looking at Bork, Powerpuff Girls, and Unicorn Gundam. Because Omni, uh, I, so yeah. here's a reality: Omni is actually not just one team; it's two teams. It's like they're just a big group. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, yeah those guys are they, now. There's another. There's now those those two Battlefield teams and then that Split Gate team is ridiculous. And <laughs> like, it's it's crazy how other teams from other games are coming in here dominating, bro. So. But I appreciate it. I welcome everybody out there. Shit, you play Pokemon Unite, bring it in here. I don't care. <laughs> Grass with sticks. We're good. Gonna, gonna hop on the console scene at this point, I guess. Oh, don't do like... that. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, no, listen. listen uh, a PSA to everybody out there. My wife got me a PS5 a couple days ago. The first thing I did was get that shit set up and I jumped on Gundam, Gundam Evolution. Bro, I... Uh, Dude, when I'm when I'm coming out, I, listen. I I learn from you guys. I learn from every single one of you guys. I watch your games. I of course I'm gonna watch your game, but I analyze them. I learn them strats. I learn the moves. Holy shit! I'm like playing team deathmatch and, and Call of Duty over there right now. You guys jump <laughs> in there, man. I, you guys, I swear to God, you guys will be like number one the next day. Game looks smooth though, no? It is super smooth. Yeah. That's the one thing I feel like. I I I, I honestly I felt that. I've had a conversation with my team a lot. I'm like, bro, this game on console feels super fucking smooth. Get yourself some Zim and fucking just turn off the uh, the auto assist. Get yo, turn off aim assist. Turn off aim assist, bro. Just make the make the PC scene on console, but just everyone zims. And like, <laughs> you got a smoother game. True. No, but I got it. It is pretty good. I, this is why um I have hopes because if if PC gets the optimization that console has. I will see a lot of those people that that packed up and left. They will be running back to this. They will be running back to this, man. The, the game is, it's a good game. It's just, oh, yeah, I no, just the game think, is great. Mm-hmm. And I just, yeah. I just want to see a little bit more, a little more patience, but a little more. I think, I think people need a little schooling in, in presentation. I think people need to learn how to, to speak. If, you, if the yeah. game is in a bad state, yeah, you can you can go ahead and go do something else for a while. You know, go do go have some fun, but don't 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 burn the bridge behind you, man. It's like there's so there's so many new people that I have invited into the Reddit cords, into the comp cords, and they're jumping in as to all this bad publicity. They're like, oh, what's and then if you start noticing it, they start repeating the same exact things that they're being told. <laughs> they start repeating it. I'm like. Yeah. I think the first thing we need to do, like you know what, Let, we, we when we get the game fixed, is bring back our our region, bring them back to NA, get the fuck out of JP. They don't want you guys over there. They don't want us foreigners in that in, in those lobbies. The problem is, I don't even know if we can play NA because of the skill based matchmaking changes. Like, I legit can't find a game in, in Diamond on NA, like in Gold on NA. It's like impossible. It's not even us at this point. It's just the game itself. Mm-hmm. Like so day you, one of the season, we and were you guys all like, are, yo, go play NA. Can't even find a game in gold. And that and that's not happening in JP? No. No? You getting games automatically, no 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 delay, no nothing? Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know. Uh, as as delayed as it's gonna be in Japan, but but yeah, like like six hour queue times, no game in NA. Uh, hop on Japan, you got one in thirty minutes, you know. Yeah, I 
Um, look, you got something to say before I go on to the next one? Because we're on the Japan subject, and I and Legacy knows where I'm going to go with this one. Yo, now nah, crazy yeah. really quick though. Can you update the um overlay so we have so it's like matches what we were talking about? <laughs> we we uh we 15 minutes behind that uh update, my good sir. What's going on? This editor over here. This editor <laughs> thinks this is like the thing. We're in the he's, subject. He's we're in the conversation. The book, huh? Ain't nobody in here looking at the bottom player. No, but um, the, while I do this, I, I'm gonna let Lux do his thing, okay? But um, until then, Lux, take it over while I go ahead and get this updated because I got one big announcement that's coming up. But it's it's about it's, it has to do with our, our current scene and JP. So go ahead and take care of that. So yeah, Legacy. I'm not sure if you wa- watched the um Triple GP um the other night, but I, I wanted to see like what were your thoughts on the um teams competing over there, and how do you feel it would be like competing in the international tournament against them potentially so i guess i'll just start by saying i didn't watch every game in the in the pre-show i watched a lot of them though um i i do intend to finish them up but there were just some teams that i i was like i want to watch these first you know mm-hmm. um so as far as playing against them uh we didn't play against all of them i've never played against otp and they ended up winning so i don't actually know how good they are um, mm-hmm. but they look good. The comps they run are good. Um, by like every metric I've seen, they should be good. Uh, so I, I would actually really like to play them. Um, as far as the others, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in Japan. You know, we see some GMs, we see some Gundams, like just some things that like I would never expect to see here. A lot of Zaku melee, even mm-hmm. after like five nerfs. Um, they they run a lot of odd things. Um. But I, I think in general, like, I guess you could kind of say the same thing as, like, NA, like, the top teams, you know, maybe, like, their top three, from what I've seen, all look pretty solid. And then after that, it's sort of, it just, you know, it's like a trickle down, it falls off, and then over time, they all just get better. Yeah. But their, their top three look really solid, OTP especially, they they run a lot of comps that, like, I look at, and I'm like, okay, like, I would run that. Okay. Oh, with that yeah. said, I will say that while we were watching... The triple GP the other night, a, a, a big group of us, a lot, a lot of the community, we were all, you know, chatting about it. Um, not a good beginning, not a good start, right? It was, it was rough. And a casual, it was a bunch of casual matches. That's, that's a crazy Shots statement. Bro, I didn't listen, say that. I'll say it. I mean, I'll competition with JP. Yo, triple like, GP. You got my. Like, you you, you, you got that. my Twitter. No, I said that. You got you. Got, all those crazy. teams, they know where to find me. All you gotta do. I'm the Don King of, of Overwatch, right? I saw Overwatch. Ah, I my <laughs> old statement. This is my old thing from back in the day. No, I'm yes. the Don King of Gun Evo. If y'all want a challenge, you guys already know. And this is why we're gonna jump into the segment. After speaking with Legacy, after watching the triple GP. Um, I didn't get to watch the like the the last match when um OTP won, but by the point I that I ended it, I was like, I won right into the GNL server. I was like, guys, there! I swear you guys can take these guys at any given time. Some of them super humble, saying no, but they're good craze. Listen, I'm gonna hype you guys up as much as I can, but honestly, you guys will take these guys on. I know for a fact that the GNL can take on the Triple GP. So, I did a public challenge first in the chat i know some people saw me because i was translating everything but the next day on twitter i did get in touch with um i I, i'm gonna butcher his name igdenap oh no uh igdapad igdapad that's my guy i found him in plot right like i've seen him come up well we we respect him no 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 no, i'm saying i'm going i'm going to butcher the name igdapad was the only one that and amongst other streamers as well, because I think there's a streamer called um Edric. I gotta try to remember his name as well. I, I hope they're not butchering his name. But they they, they were super. Uh, Edric was super humble. Um, learn about the event and all that. But Iktapad, I put the challenge out there. Nothing, nothing controversial. It was just a simple challenge. Our best team from the GNL against their best team, being them OTP. In a good old, you know, just a Western standoff. You know, we're going to put you guys into a little custom lobby and play. Now, the rules we will get later on, but I was just waiting for them to confirm. And, like, just like you said, a real humble person came back, responded. We accept. We will take the challenge. We just got to work out the scheduling issue. And that's it. 
So out there, just letting you guys all know right now, there is a challenge between the GNL team, team sucky vacuum team TSB versus triple GP's team OTP. The number one team from every team league. Down, my team is down. I'm down. I'll, I'll say that. You let me know. I know that you're always down for the challenge. If you and I know the rest of your teams in there. I know Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan <laughs> Carl is Sagan always is down line. to fight. I know <laughs> Knox <laughs> is always grinding. I know Listic is ready to go. Now I would love Glitch back. I know you guys probably got your replacements already, but I would love to see Glitch back on this. And I know that if you, we propose it, Glitch might come back because this has nothing to do with the regular standard gameplay. This is something I'm more. Keep it, uh, I'm gonna keep it a stack. I, I don't think he comes back, <laughs> but but like we have a replacement already. If if my team is down, I'm down. Have you made it public? No, but I, I don't I don't think it would matter. We we got spill. That's, that's it. You got spoon? We got spoon, yeah. And I'm telling you. I got I, I, I mm, Jesus man. So many teams looking for players, man. So many teams looking for players. Look what we're doing. But yeah, guys, you guys already heard it. Team OTP versus team TSB. In a good old fashioned standoff, and I'll be working diligently to make that happen. I'll, I'll talk to I'll speak to Legacy and I'll speak to Eat the Patch to see, you know, if the schedules can come up. It is a holiday season, so this might get a little bit, you know, delayed because of the holidays. But at least we know that the East versus West is possible. Now, you guys have always been playing these people on their ping, so you guys don't care. But if we were to choose a server to play on to keep it to keep it even between both sides, what server would that be? I, I proposed a European server, which is no nobody's there. It's like an open room right now. Mm, Would I that mean, work out for this, both sides? In this hypothetical, I think we have a massive advantage there just because me and Listic. I, I don't think that's fair. But if you go over there, you'll be going with a handicap to the Japan servers. Uh, why not both? A couple games on NA, a couple games on Japan. Ooh. That sounds, like, right. that sounds good, Chris. Okay. okay. I, I, think, and I, I think, like, you know, in this hypothetical, I think we have a massive advantage on EU. Because they would have, like, my ping on Japan. And then mm -hmm. we would have, like, you know, NA ping to EU plus EU. Like, I don't think that's fair. Okay. You know what? Guys, you heard it here. We're making this happen. The Triple GP don't want none of this. But I'm telling you, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to do something pretty cool. It'll be under the radar. It, it, it might not even be streamed if they don't want it. Because sometimes people don't want to have that streamed. But deep down, we will know the truth of who the better team is in the world between both leagues. Now, I'm um, Legacy, I'm sorry, Chris. No, I was no, no, go say, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, Legacy, uh, your teammate here, he has a question. He's asking, Carl is asking, why is he being voluntold to play, man? I didn't, I didn't say yes or no. Yeah, I said if my team's down, I'm down. I, I said it, Carl. Grace, no? don't, don't get at him. I said this. I'm putting I, I you in the other list. Carl, if you don't do it, if you don't do it, I will go back. And hunt you down on every paladin server you have out there, and I'll and, <laughs> and you know I I'll get there, and if it's private, I'll get in there. Don't do not do not doubt my networking skill. I will make you. I will find you, and I will tweet at you every single day. I will bot you every single day until you accept. We need the Carl Sagan <laughs> moments, okay? Don't do this to me, please, please don't do this to me. But let's check out the chat. I know a lot of people out there. You know they're going ballistic in the chats. Yes, I call Spoo Spoon. Yes, I did. I did. Because he's going to be dishing it out the whole time. So just, just get behind the name. Carl be renamed to Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these fucking dudes. Making drug deals behind my back. Come on, Carl. Tism. <laughs> One of my favorite players out there. Tism, thank you for coming by today. Yeah, you're on that team. Look at you. The Real Bless should do first match JP Lobby and second match NA Lobby. Make it fair. Yeah, yeah we're Tism, be the, um, out first, Tism was our first god Gundam for um ever, and I think that was during um Halloween Havoc, I'm correct. He was our very first god Gundam. Which is um the um caster's MVP. Give me one okay, yeah, okay. I for a second I thought we had we had, we had frozen. Sorry about that. I was frozen <laughs> on my side. Uh what we got what we any any questions in the chat for legacy? Let you guys this is your chance. This is your chance. I know you guys see him in the in the servers all the time, but this is the chance to really get at and you know ask me questions, you know, without all those instigators around making things uncomfortable. So this is your chance to go at it. 
Uh, remember, we are the link up to all the pro players within the scene. And these guys will be, are here to stay, I'm telling you. Listen says, I hate legacy. Well, I hate, you know I hate yeah. legacy too, we, bro. We, yeah, we hate Listic as well sometimes. <laughs> hey, what gonna, yo. <laughs> what are you going to do if Saz gets oh, super nerfed? Hey, good question. Sazavi got a hell of a buff recently. You said it yourself. You didn't really, mm -hmm. Sazavi didn't really need that. But what no. happens if he gets Omega nerfed and can no longer be used as a main tank? Like, what, 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 what else do you have in your arsenal? I'm, uh, I'm going to keep it a whole stack. I don't know how they're going to nerf that character because, like, like if, if they nerf it, it will just die. So, but then you just work out what else is good and you go and play that. Like, you know, uh, I'm one tricking right now because you kind of need to. Like, you, you need a sounds, but, like, in Paladins, like, I had a deep character pool. You know, I played, like, seven or eight different characters. Like, if, if something comes up and I need to play it, I'll play it. It's just right now I don't need to, you know? No, but the question is, what what other character fitting your style would be able to compensate for the lack of a Sasabi? Uh, I don't think anything compensates for, like, nothing replaces Sasabi. It's just, you know, if, if that character is, like, straight up dead for some reason, then you just work out what the next best thing is and go play that. But, like, I don't know. I, I think Sasabi has, like, such a unique role and job that, like, I don't I don't know how you'd like replace it. As long as that scan exists, like that card is a must pick. It can do like half the damage it does now, it makes no difference. Ozzy wants to know if you would be a GM one trick if Saz gets nerfed. No, I'm I'm actually a big GM fan. Just like I don't know when you play that character. Like like he's like made for bomb mode and I still don't want to play him in bomb mode, so like I d I don't know <laughs> what that character's supposed to be doing. But like I wish he was good. Let's see any other questions in the chat. Yeah, I played a see exec live server means jump in the, in the fun and jump out. Uh, there was see. a question for me earlier in the stream about why we're in watch merch and merch in a Gundam stream. Um, yeah, so you see, I got red pants on. I got I got the white shirt. You know, I didn't I didn't I couldn't find any of my other hats, man. I had like a Washington Nationals hat. I got a Phillies hat. I don't know where they are, man. I got you just grab the Overwatch one. I could lend you that Yankees hat. You'll love it down there. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that's I don't know, man. Yeah, well, it could it could match the fit. It could match the fit. Well, going on, we already got this, guys. JP versus uh, the Western Hemisphere. We got we're gonna be making that happen pretty soon. Um, we're gonna and they're gonna we're gonna iron out some details. Make sure it's it's convenient for both sides. Make sure the rules are in set. And understood on both ends. I mean, they should because, you know, they pretty much took out our whole format, format for the Jipple GP at the last second. But um, <laughs> I keep telling you guys, you guys are always being wise. JP watches you. JP watches you closely. So they know we got a good, a good scene out here. So it's our job to keep giving you guys a platform that, you know, keep showing up your, you know, showing up your stuff. And hopefully one day in the future when um, land events are going to be, you know, spewing out and there'll be more tournament organizers within the scene who know a little world event between regions like what will happen when europe pops off we're losing legacy now, now we're now now we're talking crazy bro listen you if, you're popping off late if I europe find pops off europe. no no i'm saying if europe pops off right the player base grows so let's, let's think about it in uh in uh in a uh, wishful thinking Europe pops off. You got you got a whole bunch of players out there. We lose legacy, but we keep Carl Sagan because he's still part of North America. How many? Like, how do you see that out there, man? I would love to see that cross cut, like you know. But how do you see that, man? What like if I gotta play EU or just yeah. like playing against Japan? No, you play in EU and you having all the connections from back in previous games. How many people they like, you don't even have to name them, but how many people you have in it like right now? That you can say, yo, come through. We got something good over here for EU. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it a whole buck. My EU list is much smaller than my NA list in general. Mm. Um, I think I think if, if I had to make a team of full EU people, I could throw together something solid. But, like, there'd be a lot of catching up to do for sure, you know? Mm-hmm. Cynic would come back, and that would be huge. Yeah, I still I still remember Cynic. 
Damn, man. Yeah, Sidic has been gone for a long time already. Hopefully, he can come back through it. But he still shows. But Sidic still shows love to the still, scene. He still plays the game. I see yeah. him on like every day. Yeah, he still plays the game, but he doesn't want to go into the competitive. He doesn't want to go to the comps. He, he he wants to just back off and just do his thing, which I highly respect. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, one of these days we can see them on a team. Because, man, that showdown is coming up. And I see all those teams signing up, but I know a lot of them. They're they're a lot of them are just like, hey, I need three people, and then they just come in like whatever. I want to know, and this and this comes. If you guys want to see more teams in the scene. I, I want to ask you. I'm a humble a humble ask. Help me get these guys to stay. They came in thinking they're going to take our money. Ha! Sadly mistaken. They're not going to take that money. They don't play this game enough. But keeping them locked in after the event is where I'm gonna, we're going to be working hard on our end to try to see. You know, let's try to pull in. If we can get out of the 38 teams, we can get at least 10 teams. Man, it'll be one of the best things to happen to our scene. Because we still got yeah. the old teams that were that, that were active, that disbanded, that are still possible to come back in the future. So there, there's, there's a lot of good scenes out there. Now, I know, and I, and I, but I would like to ask everybody within the scene, anybody that's currently on the stream right now or even in the servers, help us help you guys out. Let's, we're going to keep on working for you all, but we need your feedback because there's no better promotion than word of mouth. Let's give our scene something to strive for, okay? The game is going to be working. They're working. I know they're working digitally behind the scenes to get the game in a, in a good state. But from our part, as a community, we should start, up, you know, uplifting our own community out instead of, you know, down, you know, bringing it down, like, like I'm seeing a lot in these servers. It's getting kind of, it's getting kind of toxic out there. Mm-hmm. So, it's already, we're going on, we're going on almost at 9 o'clock already. But, I want to know something, and this is like your own opinion. What what makes you stay in Gundam? Like what may, what like I know what your aspirations are, but what makes you stay here within the scene? Just competing, to be honest. Like you know, um, basically since Paladins, I've just been pretty bored in general. Like just not much to do. So like just having like a game to just go and play, compete. You know. The, the, the tournaments are few and far between at the moment, but maybe later on it pops off and then, you know, got something to do consistently. It's basically, I just like competing, like always have. And then it's just giving me like a, a new thing to do all of a sudden. So, okay. Yeah, I'll I like be that. around. Oh, I see. I like that. People that be actually competitive, per, people that are competitive, that no matter what the situation is, they're still in the scene or they're still within the grind to still compete no matter what. And, honest, and, honest, and I'll be honest, man. It's a lot of time people will say, oh, they won't play for anything less than a certain amount, right? But at in no given time, and I know the teams that I'm talking about, have they ever mentioned money to me? They will play for yeah. free. And, it's, and, and you guys have been witnesses to this where we start up a tournament with like a price pool in the, like in the $200 range. And, that thing, and then the scene comes in, the community members come in, they put that thing up to $800. $1,000 already. Yeah. Like, that yep. is hella support from the scene. That is a lot of love in the community that really wants it to prosper. And you guys keep motivating them to keep wanting to do to do things like that, to keep playing the game. Because it shows that you guys are here for deep for what it is, to be competitors. Not for the bag, to be competitors. Um, yep. I got somebody Look. here. I, I can't pronounce the name. There's some Overwatch Top 500 team that says they're going to steamroll. The event, which is hilarious, that would make them Team Overwatch and Team, you know, Team Overwatch Type Five Hundred number seventy six or something, because every Type Five Hundred Overwatch team has come in here since day one saying the same exact thing. Yeah. Don't that, talk that about just, it. Be about die, it. By the way. Hmm? That is just die. By the way, that asked the question. Well, I'll set it, but um, but no, I. Uh, it's like you could be talented and be a top 500 Overwatch player, but if you haven't like played on a team and stuff, like you're in the same boat as everyone else, you know? Like there's a lot of talented people from a lot of different games. Like just because you're a Apex Predator in Apex doesn't mean like, you know, you're you're insanely good at team play if you throw them into a six v six hero shooter. Does it help? Yeah. But like there's still a lot to do. You know, I'm I'm intrigued to see all those teams play. You know, maybe there's some like real talent out there that'll turn up and do well, but you know, just being a top 500 like Overwatch player doesn't just mean that you win the tournament. Yeah, for sure. Like, mm-hmm. it takes a, it's a lot 
and I preach this a lot to a lot of teams. Like when when I was coaching, like the three th- main things you need is team synergy. You need to understand how your teammates play, and then you also have to have the strats built around it, right? And that's also something I noticed, like with the, a lot of the teams in this league, like they don't get those bases down before they trade roster changes. So when they make that roster change, like they when they don't have those three bases, like they're just literally still where they are. Like they're still just starting out. Like a lot of the good teams already have those three bases covered. So that way when they do make a change, like it's, it doesn't impact them as much. They can just try and plug in plug in pe- <coughs> plug in and play and yeah. just and try to get that person to fit into the scheme they have, you know. Um one question I do have, like I I'm gonna try and make this the last question and crazy, that's fine. Is yo, what's up with these prophetic statements you be having before these tournaments, dog? Like just the last la- <laughs> reviews, bro. It's just the bot reviews. It's nothing crazy. Just, nah, just but... watch a bottle too, and you could make them too, you know? Nah, bro. You be having it down to the T. You have the exact score for like the next few games, the whole entire tournament. It's just like, how are you getting these scores perfect every single time? Like, it's, I, it's one thing. It's one thing to predict the game result, but when you get the actual scores, like how are you doing this, man? Just watch a lot of VODs. Like, <laughs> I, I can't find, I can't play the game, bro. Like, I get six hour queue times. I got, I got to do something, you know. Dude, it's 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 actually really, really scary, <laughs> and for me to get day after the first day of an event, I I get a message from Legacy saying, "Listen, this was gonna happen tomorrow." All right. He's helping me plan out the whole production time of what's going to happen. I already know. Okay, you know what? Ah, you know what, Cass? We're going to be done by this time or tomorrow, apparently. And that shit actually <laughs> comes to play. It, it, I'm like, man, th- these guys are really about it. This guy's really about it. The bot reviewing. There's, a, there's teams out there that have potential, but the one thing that they keep lacking in is actual, like, Game, like team sense it's where it's the team part the game is learn but learning to be a team and studying practicing vod reviewing of all things yo how many times in sports do have we not been drilled with game film like you better be watching that game film because wherever you're going up against you better see what they're doing but some teams now think it's just hey get the get, get the pizza rolls ready go give me my g fuel I'm going in there for 20 hours. Nah, homie, it's not just that. I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go work on Kovacs. You gotta. You also gotta study the opposing team. And I hope. Actually, I promise that after the next event, now that we have spectator mode, those vods and clips will be much easier now to review. Because if you guys are doing this with the way that we were doing it, just to get the the, the production out, Hey, I commend you. It was it, it takes a lot to just watch one spe- one POV the whole time to learn how a team works. Especially a team like like Bork that doesn't have a lot of people streaming. But yeah, with the next upcoming um with um the upcoming Celestial Assault, which by the way, mwah, oh geez, that promotion material is gonna be amazing. Yeah, you guys are gonna love it. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna give Legacy. A little sneak peek of what um, Lux has been working on in the oh, background. Holy. Yeah, it looks amazing. And this is just a little a little excerpt. We will be coming out with a mid-season recap to let you guys know, anybody who's new to the scene, um, I see that Oz said that... Um, Oz mentioned right now that... Um, what did he say right now? I'm pretty sure my team of no names... I don't know if Oz is new to the scene right now. Or I might know them. I just don't know the actual um, in-game name. But if you guys haven't caught up to the breakout series and what it is entirely, please visit... Our YouTube channel um, by Expression Point Socials in the chat will get you all of our links. Go check it we out. Go have, see. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, if you, if it makes it easier. We can go, if you go down to the panel section below this Twitch stream, we have YouTube and Twitter linked down below as well. Yeah, go check it out. Every single one of the events: Pilot Showdown, Halloween Havoc, Gundam's Grace. The full vods are there for you guys to check out. But also, even better, you guys get to see individual matchups. Are gonna be, you know, you know, compartmentalized in their own little videos. You guys can enjoy for VOD reviews and also some amazing highlights that will be released coming out in the next couple of weeks. Some of them are already out there, but you'll be getting more throughout the weeks. You guys can check out amazing clips, amazing gameplays from these talented individuals, and specifically Tism because Tism is everywhere. 
<laughs> Tism is everywhere. So we appreciate, um, you know, Tism giving us this point of POV. But with the next, well, now that we have spectator mode and we have tested it, just so you guys know, until they fix the timeout, we will not be implementing timeouts. Did you guys already timeouts know? Do work. They do, but they crash the game. They don't if you don't spam it. You can do it once, wait and unpause, and it works perfectly fine. What's funny for us, every single time we tested it, even with one against one, press it once, and we'd be coming back to it just one time, always crashed us. So it's, it's weird. It. We're, we're going to keep testing. We're going to keep doing this a couple of times here and there. We're going to make sure. I'm actually thinking about doing a couple of scrim events for teams that want to scrim, that want us to kind of, you know, showcase them or just, you know, handle the back end. We'll be more than happy to do that. Just give me, just, just reach out to us. We'll be always, we're always available. Um, let us know if you guys want us to do this for you and we'll set up a time in a day for us to, you know, to set it up. And this way we can use that as an official test for the upcoming tournament, which by the way, no. we'll be, we will be releasing the date pretty soon, but before mid December, you guys will know exactly when the event will be. Okay. That works. Go ahead, Lux. I was going to say, it also gives me practice with the spectator system, man. I've been trying to hop in that rain. I've been trying to hop in that um, custom games, get some practice with observing for you, man. Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, Legacy, plug yourself over there. Let these guys know where they can find you. Let, let, let them know what you got going on and um and your prediction. I mean, I know you say you're going to win this, but I, I give, give them a little prediction from what, a little taste of what you got coming something, up. Something crazy. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So first things first, you can find me Twitter at the LGCY. Uh, same with my Twitch, but I stream once every six months, so don't expect anything. Uh, <laughs> and then let, let me just throw you a nasty prediction real quick. I don't know who we're playing the first game of, of the next tournament. I don't even know when the tournament is, but but 2-0. There you go. That was a new type moment brought to you by Link Up. Hold them to it. A lot of people know that, that what, what um, Team Sucking Back is all about, Team TSB. Um, guess we know who Legacy is. Legacy is looking for people to scrim against, okay? If you guys want to scrim against a team that knows what they're doing, go ahead and hit them up. Don't now, if you guys are going to go into it, go into it as a training for yourself, but also analyze them too. Don't let, don't just think it's all about them going against you guys. So, and if you guys have any requests for scrimming, let me know. Uh, we'll be working on that stuff as well and be on the lookout for two things coming up the Celestial Assault, um, date release. The mid-season recap video, and actually a third one on top of that just came up, and the East versus West matchup between the Triple GPs, Team OTP versus Team um, the GNL's very own number one team, Team TSV. So you guys already know, hit the follow. Get out, get out, little girl. That's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want to see more, make sure you hit the follow button. Make sure you guys follow us. Uh, go, go subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow the GNL underscore GG account on Twitter and also myself as well, Luxus and Legacy. Let us know what's up. And to every team out there who's already part of the GNL server, you guys are more than welcome to use that server to communicate amongst the teams that are already established, okay? You don't have to be going into other servers just to drop and see what happens. You guys have a direct link to other team owners, okay? So, and also the captains. So reach out to each other. And if you guys have any of the teams out there, remember the only way to get into the GNL server is to participate in the GNL breakout series by um, signing up to our next event uh, and you'll get automatic access to it. All right. So Lux, is there anything else we want to throw it out there? Um, No, I think I'm good. Uh, actually, um, if you have any team captains here, throw your logos in the chat so we can use it for the next event. Please give me your logos. I need them. Unless you want to be stuck with the default logo. Just Seriously, guys, this is well, we're asking you to, to be creative and give us your logos to represent you guys. If you guys look at the leader the leaderboard sheets, you will now see the that your logos are have been added. And please do not give us dumb ass names. I'm telling you, no more dumb ass names, okay? Because you guys right. are being watched by the other regions. Give no, us something professional. I can't wait to tell you what we're changing it to, bro. We be, I've been calling you. I've been I'm calling gonna, you. I'm gonna play you off stream, All right, but okay. like, cool, like cool. we got a, we got a new team name. We won't update until yeah. you let us know, right? So, mm -hmm. we've been calling you Team TSB. You know, AKA whatever they're gonna tell me next. But please, team guys, take this real serious. The showdown as well. I see some names in there that are very. 
Bro, if I was me, I wouldn't even let you play at all. I saw some names in there. The team CD, y'all trash. Off rip. Y'all trash. I want you to play because I want I, I want these guys names. to get you. Hmm? That's some crazy names in there. I haven't like, looked yet. Bro, have you seen the in-game names? I, I've seen some in-game names, but I haven't looked at like the, the showdown stuff the at all. Like, I don't know the team names of the players or anything. I'll give you one name. Penal Dysfunction. No, it's kind of fire though, no? I hate you. You're telling me you don't want him to win? <laughs> Bro, we had what? Can I can I even say CD's name? No, no, name no. I'm not getting I'm not getting banned for that shit. <laughs> Dumbass name. But overall, like, and T and T and T sucky va- and T sucky vampires wasn't a bad name either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you think, you think that's a good one. You how many times? How, how many times have, did you mold in the chat when we were, they were saying T sucky vampires? So like. First time I let it slide, I didn't type nothing. I was like, that's a mistake, that's a slip up, that's whatever. All good. Second time he said it, insta typed. Full caps. Like, <laughs> like back to you, Mr. My guy. Yo, and yo, he caught and I just typed it. He said, Oh my god, no. I didn't do that on purpose. I'm like, yo, so that was a that was a mistake though. But overall, like honestly, thank you so much for what you do. Thank you so much for being that connection. Um, you already know my channels to you know who and you know where are always available to the community. Um, but I want to reiterate that if they need it, that we can't expect change if we're going to be forcing it on ultimatums. If you think that you're going to force somebody's hand to do something, you're doing it wrong. So legacy's approach is the last one to do it via a letter a written statement was perfect. I will say they did read the letter. They did read through everything and they made adjustments and they actually made some, some recommendations for me to tell you guys is. In regards to the community manager, and Vampy can can kick it. You guys can tell me because I've already spoke to Vampy. Vampy is not what you guys think. Vampy is labeled as community manager because Bandai labeled as that, but that's not her role. Her role is a social media manager. Like she's contracted uh, to run social media, so she's not the point of contact for things. Okay, that's she, yeah, that's very different though. Yeah, yeah, so she comes into the community, she watches, she 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 generates stuff. So what I do to help her out. Because I'm already so intertwined with you guys is I do the feedback form. So now you guys saw me going around the servers asking for the, like, to, to fill out the feedback forms. That's your chance to get your stuff in there. And I sep- and I, I send it to like four different people. Bandai, contractors, and GEVO. The actual community manager is actually in Treasy. So Interesting. Yeah. Because so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So I would tell you, and that's just not, I want you guys to be very clear on what, you know, who's where. But if you have anything you ever want to like relay that's important, you guys have me to go ahead and push that forward. I will not insert myself into your argument. Like I did last time, I did not read the letter until after I made sure that they were reading it because I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, affect what you were trying to, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to, you know, to communicate. And that's what I want. And you got, I want you guys to have your voice. I want you guys to uh, be able to get your voice out there and they are aware of it and they're, very grateful. Um, I will, I will, and I, if you, if, it's just, if you want some communication back for them, give them time because you know how Japan is in this game. Japan controls everything. They, America can't do anything unless they are approved by JP and it takes some time even to even do an, an announcement. So with that said, what a, a little announcement in regards to some Gundam products that will be hitting the shelves starting this month. St- and continue on through the rest of the year. We finally got the license to Gundam stuff in America. No more of us importing shit from Japan. Now, North America has received the approval to do licensing. So now you have, might have seen two new products out in the market. You have the new G Fuel flavor, um, Melon Ramine, RX Melon. It'll be, it's going to hit the shelves starting. Um, the wait list has already started as of now. You guys can go to gfuel.com. Go check them out. Um, if you're a collector, go ahead and make sure you get a piece of history for, for the, you know, for the gun community. Um, starting, I believe next month in, J- in January is when they're going to start actually selling the products. Um, but they announced it today and also the new keyboards, um, mouse pads, merch, merches, and all that stuff from high ground has been announced today. There's also a waitlist for that as well. So make sure you guys get it. It is in high ground works. As a street brand, as you guys already know, it's a limited amount of a, a limited quantity. So if you guys want it, get yourself on that list because once they're gone, they are gone. Those keywords look fucking dope in a 50% format. So with that, 
said, thank you, Legacy, for coming by today. I really do appreciate it. I love you. Thank you so much for everything you've been doing for the community. Keep doing what you're doing. I see you as the point of contact for whatever we need in the community. You've been you've been very professional, and I love that. Uh, Lux, thank you for everything you've done. The league is going uh, is doing amazingly, and I thank everybody for their support. Uh, on my behalf, I wish you guys all the best. Have a great rest of your day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Make sure you tune in for um, the Gundam Showdown on the 10th. 10th. Do I'm not excited. miss oh. out. And even if you can't play, do not boycott it. Remember, I told you they are working to take, take up the region lock. So the next one, you guys will be able to showcase what you're doing. Hold me to that. I'm fighting for you guys. You're saying that right now. I'm I holding you to that. I'm just, I can play in the next the next one. Talk and I will and I will complain for you. I will voice my I will voice it like I did for this one. But I but I already know they're working on I, it. So I am not a Bandai employee, but I do have a working relationship it. with some of them. So yeah. um, that said, thank you for joining me today. This is my boy um, Legacy. This is my co-host Lux. I'm your boy Craze. Follow us on our socials. We'll catch you next Tuesday. After the first ever Gundam, sh the second ever Gundam Showdown 20K tournament, to recap what it is. So, if there's something you want to have as a guest host, like a guest here, please let me know in um and in the servers. Please let me know through socials, and we will do our best to get that person on stream. Okay, so if you've never seen them on stream, you might see them with us. We'll catch you guys the next time. Peace.